You know what they say, you can't be a Muslim, Robin, if you're not hijabin. What? That makes zero sense. Yeah, but it rhymes. To say all Muslim women wear hijabs would be like saying all hipsters in Brooklyn drink fancy coffee while riding unicycles. That would be inaccurate and frankly ignorant because only 47% of Brooklyn hipsters ride unicycles. But bad hipster jokes aside, the truth of the matter is the hijab in America seems to get a disproportionate amount of attention considering that only 38% of Muslim American women wear a hijab in public all the time. And since Muslims only make up about 1% of the US population, this means we're really only talking about 650 50,000 people, which sounds like a lot, but our country is really big. But before we can understand that bigger picture, it's probably a good idea to know exactly what the hijab is and why do some Muslim women choose to wear it. Let's check in with my friend Faria Khan to get a better understanding. Thanks, Francesca. Okay, for starters, what is a hijab? Good first question, y'all. In Arabic, hijab translates to cover. All right, cool, got it. But wait, there's a twist. There is not one, but many types of veils. Yeah, it's slideshow time. First, we get that classic square scarf that covers the hair and neck, commonly worn in the West. This is what is mostly known as a hijab. This can also be referred to as a kimar or also a shaila, with a variety of ways to wear them, huh? Next up, the chadar is a long cloak popular in Iran. Similar to the hijab, shaila, and kimar, the chadar covers the hair and keeps the face clear, but drapes down to the feet. Black is the most popular color, but sometimes they got fun patterns too. The niqab covers the face and body, but leaves the eyes clear. These are commonly worn in Saudi Arabia, South Asia, and North Africa. Finally, burqas cover the entire face and body, leaving a small mesh screen over the eyes. Burqas are worn most often in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Whoa! So many variations, so many styles, so many ways to do you. Or you could be like me that one time when I was 10 and I forgot to bring a hijab to Sunday school. And instead, I just put a t-shirt over my head and went to class. Everyone called me t-shirt girl. That was my bad. I'm sorry I brought shame to my family. Ugh. Let's move on! Second off, what are the multiple reasons women choose to wear a hijab? Very astute second question gang slash script writers. Some women choose to wear hijabs because they interpret the Quran, the teachings from God, as suggesting they dress modestly to protect from unwanted harassment based on their appearance. It's an expression of their faith. As a side note, truly insane to realize street harassers have been around since religion. Dang, dudes. But for other Muslim American women, it's not so much about religious faith as it is cultural identity. In a way, we're all just out here trying to rep who we are. Some American Muslims choose to wear hijabs because they want to express their identity to the world. Think about how, for example, some Christians like to wear crosses even if they don't go to church every week, or how vegans always find a way to bring up their lifestyle in casual conversation. Because for lots of people, being Muslim is not just about religion, it's also about growing up in a community of like-minded people tied together by food, family, and good times. In fact, the attitudes that American Muslims have about the importance of their religion in their day-to-day -day lives are shockingly similar to Christian Americans. Check out these stats! We're basically the same! Also, it's worth noting that the laws around hijab vary by country. Some countries require women to wear hijabs, such as Iran, and some countries have banned the hijab completely, such as France. However, putting laws on how women choose to express their faith and identity is repressive. That is essentially a country projecting onto a woman how she should look and act, which we all know is oppressive as hell. That's why the fact that America allows the freedom to choose whether or not to wear a hijab is such a beautiful thing for the Muslim community. So yeah, you heard it here first from a Muslim girl herself. America is tight. What's up, Bill of Rights? Okay, but does every Muslim woman wear a hijab? No! On the flip side, many Muslim women choose not to wear hijabs for a variety of reasons. For example, there are Muslim women who acknowledge that the Quran teaches modesty, but they don't interpret wearing a hijab as a specific religious commandment. I personally choose not to wear a hijab. The way I grew up, I didn't wear a hijab except for when my family went to the mosque, which was mostly for Sunday school and for Eid celebrations, which happened twice a year. And if you don't know what Eid is, it's like Christmas for Muslims. It's a big party, we have a good time, and we live to eat, baby. In addition, wearing a hijab in the Western world can actually draw more attention and at times harassment to women, which is the exact opposite goal of what the Quran even intended. For example, there have been reports of women who have been attacked in public for wearing hijabs. News stories have aired of people freaking out about Sharia law when a group of young girls wearing hijabs got their own swim class at a YMCA in Minnesota. Cut! Dang! Unfortunately, these acts are based on a larger misinterpretation that all Muslims are somehow involved or connected to terrorism, which is simply not true. 
Islam's core teachings are peace and love for all human beings. Just like any culture or religion, there are groups of people within it who choose to act in extreme and terrible ways, but those people do not define the whole population. There are 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. We are not all the exact same or even practice Islam in the same way. For me, my Muslim identity was built on going to Sunday school as a kid, to hang out with my friends a bunch, trying to be the Sunday school class clown, convincing the boys to let me play football with them in the parking lot because I had a crush on this one kid, and then trying to sneak in as much food as possible at Eid parties. Totally. <laughs> I'm proud of my Muslim heritage. Even if I don't pray five times a day or I'm not like super religious, which my dad says I'm lazy for, but I just think I'm chill. Being Muslim is part of my identity and it makes up who I am. I wouldn't be the same without my cultural background. Thanks, that was super insightful, Faria. So it seems Islam has a lot of different perspectives. But I think the most important thing that I learned is Muslims, they love to eat a lot at parties, but who does it? Exactly. I love that are hot and contentious topic right now, but no one interpretation is the only correct interpretation. Special thanks to Faria for helping out this week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Decoded. So did you really wear a t-shirt over your head to Sunday school that one time? Yeah. Yeah.